Hello guys, welcome back to Patrick TV GH. This is your savings tutor, Mr. Patrick Ban, coming your way on this wonderful channel. This is Ghana's number one financial YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the topic budgeting and expense management. I'm sure you are wondering, um, why haven't we been discussing this topic on expense management? Because perhaps are you having challenges managing your expenses? Today we have in the house experts who are going to walk us through what we need to do when it comes to budgeting and how to manage our expense. But before we go into the details, we want to take a short commercial break from our main sponsors, Pension Alliance Trust, um, the best pension house in Ghana. After the commercial break, we'll come back with today's session on budget and expense management. Have you heard about Pension? Pension is a hospitalization benefit, disability and life insurance benefits package underwritten by Alliance Life Insurance. A Pensions Alliance Trust, or PAT. As a contributor to PAT, you get to enjoy Pensure for free as your contribution accumulates under the Tier 3 and Inundasu Wealth Builder Pension Scheme. This hospitalization benefit, disability and life insurance cover enhances your family's financial security. So what are you waiting for? Join Pensions Alliance Trust today and enjoy these free benefits too. Pensure your financial security enhanced. To sign up, call us on 0302-775-349 or 0501-553-839. Email us at clientservice at pensionsalliancetrust.com or use the web portal on our website www.pensionsalliancetrust.com Alternatively, you can reach us on any of our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Pensions Alliance Trust is available on your phone through the PAT app on both Android and iOS. Terms and conditions apply. Pensions Alliance Trust, securing your future. Welcome back from the commercial break. Um, as I said in the introduction today, we are looking at budgeting and expense management. Um, I have in the, in the studio two wonderful people who are going to walk us through what we need to do uh, when it comes to budget and expenses. I have with me Dora Yuri from IC Managers. She's the Head of Wealth Management. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you, Patrick. And I also have Raphael Boy from IC Asset Managers, Head of Sales. So we have two heads in our midst uh, today and they are going to help us understand the topic uh, budgeting and expense management. Let me start with you, Raphael. When you talk of budgeting, um, let's try to explain it to Maybe someone watching who is on the street who might have heard about budgeting so many times. Perhaps the only time they heard about budgeting is maybe when the finance minister <laughs> goes to parliament to talk about budgeting. Yes. So what is budgeting so, from the personal uh, side? Okay, so from, from um, as an individual, um, when we talk about budgeting, basically what we are trying to talk about is how much you intend to spend within a particular period. So you are looking at um, your income, how much you are earning as an individual, and how much you intend to spend, how much you plan to spend. That's the budget. Budget basically means that we are planning um, our expenses. Okay. So I'm planning that I earn an income of, let's say, 2,000 cities a month. Um, I need to spend, you typically hear the word, spend within your means, spend within your means. The way you go about it is to budget. That means that I have a plan to ensure that if I earn 2,000 cities a month, I, mean, I don't spend beyond 2,000 cities a month because then you need to be a magician to do that. Yeah. In, in Ghana, it's mostly said that we are magicians. Yeah. You have an individual who earns 2,000 cities a month, but his expenses on a month-to-month -month basis is beyond 2,000. Yeah. That means that there's going to be a problem. There's going to be a deficit. There's going to be some cost. Yeah. Or some, 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 you are spending money that you've not earned. Yeah. And that's going to create um, financial problems for you in the future. So basically, when you talk about budgeting, just to the average person to understand without any without using any technical jargon we are just saying that it's money you tend to spend within a particular period based on how much you earn That's wonderful all. wonderful I, I think this is the, the, the simplest definition I've, I've ever heard um do i let me come to you is there any linkage between budgeting and expense management yes yes patrick there definitely is so Expense management, you can think about it as a part of budgeting. Okay. As Raphael showed us, budgeting is looking at how much you bring in your income 
as against your plan on how much you are spending. Yeah. So expense management is really focusing on that spending side, the expenditures, yeah. and trying to manage that portion so that you are still within the income yeah. that you are earning. Okay, so I think so we can say that expense is like a byproduct of budgeting. So Correct. when you are looking at budgeting, expense is part of the part of it. Now let's look at a typical budget, Raphael. How should it look like? Perhaps someone may have been doing something at home, thinking that it's a, it's a budget. Perhaps after your explanation, the person will begin to look at it again and see, okay, this is not how it is done. How should a typical budget look like? So, so there, there are various ways of looking at it. There's yeah. not a, a, a one-fits-all um, way of looking at budgets. Yeah. So um, there are several rules of terms. You have the 70-20-10 uh, rule. You have the 50-30-20 rule. Yeah. So there are several rules. When I speak to people, I make them understand that there's generally what's um, acceptable in terms of how your budget should look like. But as an individual, you also need to know your your personal circumstances, how much you earn, and that should inform um, how your personal budget should look like. So the 50, 30, 20 rule. So basically what that word saying is that 50% of your income should be geared towards your very necessary expenses. We are talking about if you're not living in your own house, your rent, the things that are critical for you to you and your family, or if you are living alone yourself, to survive in a particular month. So 50% of your expenses the necessities, 50% of your expenses should be able to take care of all of that. Then 30% of your income should take care of your wants. Um, the things that are not so critical, but at least creates room for you to also live as a human being, yeah. basically. So 30% of your, of your income takes care of that. And 20% will take care of your investments, your savings and investments. So if you have plans towards buying a car, have plans towards anything else you tend to do, build a house, get my plan for your retirement, yeah. then 20% of that income should be geared towards working towards that goal. Some also have what they call the 70-20-10 rule. 70% should take off all the necessities. 20% should take care of, I mean, allow you some room as a human being, and then 10% towards savings. Um, when you are speaking in the church, they tell you that 10% is your tight. budget. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, tight. Tight, yeah. So that means that the way you structure it should have your 10% yeah. budget um, tight in there. So if I pay my, my tight of 10%, then I have 90%. How do I allocate it? How much goes into my savings? How much goes into my, my um, very, very, very important expenses? So that's why I said there's not a one way fit all, um, but generally, as an individual, I need to look at how your life is structured and also what your goals and ambitions are financially. Because sometimes, depending on the things you want to do, yeah. you might want to save more. So that means if I'm moving 20% of my total income into investments or savings, then I need to be able to restructure my lifestyle yeah. such that the 80% takes care of my lifestyle. Basically, that's all you're talking about. No, you know, uh, it's good you mention lifestyle. And uh, <laughs> on this channel, I've talked about lifestyle adjustment several. I mean, when you talk to people about their finances and you say, okay, if you shift this amount of money into this investment, it, needs, it means you have to readjust your lifestyle. And people find it very difficult to readjust their lifestyle. You as asset managers, I mean, you, these are people that you meet every now and then. What are the reasons why people find it very difficult to readjust their life when it comes to budgeting? Let me start with you. Well, I, I can try and take a stab at it. I mean, I can look at it from even my own personal, you know, situation. It's you get comfortable with a certain standard of living. So when you have maybe shocks like inflation going up or maybe even a sudden um, event in your family and you need to cough up some money, you have to readjust. It's, un it's uncomfortable. So I can understand from a human point of view that you know readjusting your lifestyle is not easy to do. Yeah, but yeah. it takes some level of sacrifice. As Ralph mentioned, depending on your plan for the future, your own financial well-being, where you want to be, maybe let's say 10 years down the line, maybe even for retirement, your yeah. pension. It's um, a sacrifice that you may have to make today so that down the road you reap those benefits and then you'll be able to live more comfortably at that yeah. point in time. Yeah. Do you want to add to Yes, what, I think that for, what, what I'll add briefly is that we just need to understand that 
the sort of lifestyle we live is highly dependent on how much you're earning. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh, typically when I'm talking about it, it's a numbers game. The numbers that determine what's going to be. So you, you can't wish to live. Okay, you can wish, but yeah. you cannot live a lifestyle of someone saying like, let's say, 10,000 cities a month, doing a earning 3,000 cities a month. It's, it's, the numbers don't add up. So it's just behavioral. And until you, are, you, you accept the realities and live that way, you always uh, be in debt. Yeah, so um, we are in a typical Ghanaian setting. Mm -hmm. We know how families are. So I have my budget well laid out. I'm listening to this, I've set my budget. I know 50% should go into that, 30%, 20% into some project. I want to go to school next year. Mm -hmm. yeah. But family will come to you and say, that, I need this money, I need that money. How should you treat that against your budget for you not to also look like you are, as we say it in Ghana, stingy or a miser? Yeah. How do you approach <laughs> this? I don't know what we I... have. Uh, we have. <laughs> yeah. We've come across this many times, yeah. actually. And essentially, what we say is, you have to plan for it. Yeah. You know, we know, like you said, you know, we know the situation we are in. Yeah. We know the social um, constructs we live within, and we know we have to look after each other. Today, it's somebody. Tomorrow, it might be you. Yeah. So you try not to be miserly, but you also plan um, accordingly. So okay. if Perhaps the 10% that Ralph mentioned that may go into savings or may go into planning. You may want to have maybe two different kinds of savings. One, particularly for a goal you may have in mind, and then another as let's say, an emergency fund, because we know these things do happen. But even so, there has to be some level of a limit. Okay. So you give, and then when that fund is depleted, unfortunately, at that point, you cannot be accused of being stingy <laughs> yeah. okay so so i i ask that because for example if i have 50 30 20 as you said mm -hmm. does it mean that 20 will have to be 20 for let's say the whole year or if i get some of these advances for a particular matter i can reduce from 20 to let's say five and go back to the 20 or because i've set a rule for myself of 20 it has to be 20 throughout the whole year or forever mm -hmm. so so you realize that even with how you are um, describing it, in most cases, it's not practical right. because if I decide that for the month of June, I'm using that in the 20, I'm going to use 15% of that to take care of it. It's not dependent on what's is at stake for you to have to deal with. The amount of money might not be able to do that. So typically, as I said, what we tell people is that you have to plan. There's, depending on your family, the social construct where you're coming from, you know that, okay, there's a family that I'm taking care of. Care of. For someone, they don't take care of their, they don't give, give their parents any money at the end of the month. Even their parents will really give them. <laughs> they don't have a junior brother, a junior to take care of. For someone, he's probably the firstborn having mm -hmm. those problems. So it depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. And what we say is that you need to plan towards these things as well. Because that's what budgeting is all about. When the Minister of Finance comes to you, their budget, there are several aspects of what we want to do as a nation. We are planning for it, and we are planning for other things as well. So there's a there's a there's a an allocation that is allowed when it's an emergency or there's some something prompts a nation needs to do. We spend money to do that. So you need to factor that in your personal planning. Yeah. That family, maybe five percent. So then that means that you cannot do fifty, twenty. So it means when I do the five percent. Let's say, let's quantify it to, let's say, 200 cities. 200 cities, yeah. For for that. I, can't, I can't go beyond that. Yeah, so, but bear in mind that the problem, these things don't come every yeah. month or month. Yeah. So you, you tend to build up some cash okay. for okay. that. So then when something happens, you are able to take over to the extent that you can. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you also need to understand that you, you cannot solve everybody's problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is yeah. fundamental. But you need to play a part, and where you can, that's what I say, where you can support, support to the extent that you mm -hmm. can, because then you cannot also drown yourself just because you need to support. So you need to think about it right, yeah. and then work towards it. Yeah. Dora, let me come to you. Perhaps this question will be a bit uh, tough, but I, mm -hmm. I hope that my viewers will get an answer that they, they will like. So we are in Ghana. We know what's happening from last year up to now. Yeah. You buy things and inflation is just around 40 something percent. Mm -hmm. You buy something, the next month the price keeps on going up. You have this budget. I'm not focusing on expenses. You have expenses that will lay down your budget. 
with certain indicators and some amount by them. But the prices they keep going up. Yeah. And your salary, unfortunately, or your income is still the same. Mm. Should you continue to buy the same items because they are necessities? Or you have to go and find some some extra income somewhere or how should people manage themselves in situations like yeah. this yes it's tough i mean we are all in it as you mentioned um and there's some things that you just cannot plan for unfortunately and th this situation has been one of in the last year i think it's a it's a two um pronged approach that we would suggest usually if you have the ability to increase your income okay. if you can do a side gig side hustle yeah. you name it try it um, if you are able to switch from higher cost inputs into your lifestyle to lower cost ones, some of the things we cannot change, like the cost of petrol is a cost of petrol. Yeah. But maybe other things we can. If we can change, um, switch to different brands and things like that, try it. Yeah. You may actually discover a new brand you like, which, yeah. is, which is more affordable. And, and then for the ones that you absolutely need, that you cannot live without. Transportation is one key um, cost. Unfortunately, you'll have to perhaps adjust other parts of your budget in order to make room for that. What we want to say though is that as much as you can, try and keep the discipline of the investing and the saving part. If your company allows you to do a tier three and it's been automated for you, Continue to do it. Don't. This is probably not the time to go and cash in. Yeah. Uh -huh. So keep that investing and the savings culture going, yeah. because with that discipline, you'll see that down the road, like they say, all these things come and go. Down the road, when this situation has also passed, you'll be much better off than the guy who went and cashed in. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I agree. Before the good stuff that you mentioned about how we can manage um, expenses and its importance in future. You see how people, I mean, giving some excuses, and where you sit, you meet some of these people every now and then. Mm -hmm. What are the common mistakes or excuses that people give when it comes to budgeting? And what are the I mean, things that you, you tell them to disabuse their minds on, the excuses that they are, they are living on? So, so one of the typical excuses you hear, I mean, is when you, talk, when you bring up budgeting, I mean, say, oh, the money is not enough. Yeah. yeah. The money is not enough, so uh, of course it's yeah. not enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not enough, so how do I budget? I mean, th that's that's even the more reason why you should budget, mm -hmm. because you have limited resources. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you don't plan appropriately, you are you, if you are moving without a plan, you say you are planning to fail. Mm -hmm. You typically end up in, in in a lot of debts, and that will really not make you um, help you to achieve your financial objectives. Also, what we typically tend to do is that people, okay, okay, in my mind, I know that I end, I have a plan, I have a plan. You know, we don't take our time to write things down and know that this is the plan that I'm following and track how we are doing with our plan. The typical guy only want to, okay, I end 2000. Okay, then they sit down, just do this, and that's, and that's, that's, the, that's the budgetary <laughs> process. And so that, that happens a lot. And so you realize that there's really nothing that I can look to, because you easily forget the projections you made in your mind. Yeah. And actually, when you write it down, or you, today there are a lot of mobile apps that you can even use, a lot of um, tools that you can use for your budgeting. And there are some interesting ones that you can even connect with your partner. And so whilst you, you spend, you're able to yeah, track it, your partner to you. So as a family, you are even able to see how well we are doing towards yeah. um, our expenses. So typically you have people making some of these mistakes and we try to let them understand that no, you need to plan, you need to actually write it down, use a tool that will help you so that you can track it and then also stick into the plan. Yeah. Because you typically have people, I had a budget, but this happened. Yeah. But this happened. Just like Ghana, we have budget, but we don't follow. <laughs> yeah, so, so we have to stick to it. Because yeah. when you spend all that time to plan, yeah. you have to now stick to the plan to make it work. Um, when you do that, to create a month or month, month or month, end of the year, you're able to see, or maybe quarterly, or by, you know, dependent on how you want to do a review, and then you're able to do some adjustments in the coming month and then you, and then you okay. move forward. On, on the sticking to the budget, can, should I do it myself? Do I need someone to be like a policeman on me when it comes <laughs> to my budget that I've set? Or I just have to learn to discipline myself? 
to stick to the budget? Well, it really depends on what works for you. <laughs> the ideal the ideal situation is that you are able to stick to it yourself. Yeah. However, I think Ralph has pointed out that there are a number of apps that allow you to track. Okay. If you are able to, maybe maybe you don't like spreadsheets, so the app works for you. If you are able to um, track your actual expenditures and also do the review that Ralph mentioned every six months, every four months, whatever works for you, to see how you're actually tracking against the goals that you have set mm -hmm. on your expenditure side, then, or even on your income side, if you manage to increase your income, mm -hmm. then you can do it yourself. And that app or that spreadsheet kind of, you know, gives you that reality check that, A, maybe you are going, of course, that. and then when you do your review, you notice that it's time to ring some expenditure yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. Um, we, are, we are trying to wrap it up. Um, in your um, work, line of work, I'm sure you meet people that you sold this idea to them yeah. and um, they went and implemented and they came back with some um, stories that you want to share with our viewers so that it doesn't become... Sometimes when we teach some of this, people think, oh, uh, this guy just giving us some, some, some fictitious <laughs> stuff. What are the personal experiences that you have with people that have implemented some of these, these uh, principles and have been able to make it in life? So, so quite a number, quite a number. I think that um, we've been having conversations with different people um, over the past years. I've been talking, I've been talking to people for about eight years now in terms of personal um, financial planning, how to sort of put their finances together and all of that. And we've had several success stories. So um, there was this gentleman that, in our initial conversations with him, he was earning, let's say, a set amount. Over time, so you realize that, as I said, the budget is not one fit all. Because at the beginning stages for him, he then had debts. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the budget was for him to also pay off his debts okay. as quickly as he can. So we needed to have a conversation and some adjustments that will help him be able to do that. Now that he has fully paid off his, his, his debts, his loan with the bank, there's a different plan that mm -hmm. he's, he's following. And if you look at his, invest, his personal investments today, it looks very good. And so he has a separate um, investment plan towards all the things he wants to do. And a separate one for retirement. Okay. Because what we also, the mistake that we also tend to do as young people is that mm -hmm. we also don't actively plan towards retirement. It's something that we take for granted. Yeah. But the truth is that you are going to get old. Yeah. Exactly. And yesterday I was speaking to a friend of mine, I was like, hey, I'm an old man. You are getting there. You are getting there. So, so it's something that you are actually going to get there. Yeah. And with these sort of tools, budgeting, your expenses, putting part in savings, it really helps you realize that over time you are getting to the path or the target that you are setting for yourself. It's only by budgeting and sticking to the budget, ensuring that you don't spend more than you earn. Else you cannot. I hope the whole concept of budgeting is not to make people wicked. Oh, it's, it's not to make them wicked, but it's just to let you understand the reality yeah. mm -hmm. that this is really all that it is. You cannot spend more than you're earning. Mm -hmm. You need to spend less than you earn okay. and make provision for savings, for investment, to to achieve the good things of life. Because, to be able to help people. Yeah, because yeah. mm -hmm. part of part of financial well-being as a person is that you also need to be, be able to make choices that allow for enjoyment of life. Yeah. You all want to enjoy life. It's critical. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So um, we are wrapping up. What to be your final with Dora? Then I'll go to you. Sure. So finally, I would say, as my advice to your viewers, two things. Um, have an emergency fund. And that is a fund that will be used to help people or to take care of that broken thing in your house, in your car, whatever it may be. And then secondly, I'd say, um, look to automate your investing or your saving. Okay. When you receive your salary or your stipend or however you earn your income, that portion, that 20%, 10% that you want to put away for future planning, emergency fund, make it an automatic deduction, a standing order, or whatever works in your, um, your situation so that you don't even have to think about touching it. Okay. Because the temptation is real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think that's so my, my last words to, to your viewers and, and for everybody else who's watching is that 
we need to be personally responsible for our financial future. It's critical that as an individual, you need to be committed to ensure that if I have a budget, I'm sticking to the budget. I'm making the right financial choices that would ensure that I'll be able to achieve my targets. We are all not all finance experts. Speak to the right people. Speak to the people who understand this, do this on a daily basis. Speak to them, let them advise you, and then follow, follow that form of advice. Because um, you're talking about helping people. If you don't help yourself, to be able to have the financial freedom. You can't help anyone. Yeah. The people we see doing big philanthropic projects, they have money. They have money. That's why they're able to do that. Yeah. So you need to get there. So you have to help yourself, get there, make sure you are, you are financially independent, and then you can help somebody else. So it's very important that we, we put these things together. Thank you very much for coming on my show to talk about budgeting and expense management. Viewers, it has been another educative session on this channel. Um, one of the key things that um, Rafael said was that get expert. And of course, the best expert that you can get when it comes to retirement is Pension Alliance Trust and they are sponsors. Kindly look at the numbers on the screen and call them to help you to prepare a budget and also structure your life so that financially you'll be sound. Uh, as he said, if you're hungry, you can't help anybody. So that excuse of waiting to get money before you do certain things is a thing of the past. And that's what we preach on this channel. I'll come back um, next week for another educative session on this channel. If today is the first time watching, please subscribe to the channel and share this link with your friends to also be blessed by what we are doing on this channel. My name again is Patrick Barbanka, Lead Facilitator for Patrick TV GH.